Hello and welcome back to Civ. Uh, today, me and Duncan are going to carry on going through... Oh, why am I going on the internet? Uh, we, we're going to carry on going... I was hosting a game. We're going to play against randoms. Uh, <laughs> if only. Maybe we could have a game with some of the people on the Reddit. Um, that would be cool. I think that would be good. Oh, they're going to wreck us. They would wreck us because they know everything. <laughs> Today we're going to resume um, our ASCII playthrough and see how that was going and see if we can um, t talk about like moving into the mid game, where we should be going, what we should be doing, and I guess just generally getting a feeling for like what kind of things you should do to win the game in Civ, All right? So Duncan, yeah, what do you sit? What do you think when you look at this tech look tree? Look at that twenty science compared to Babylon. Whew. 20 sites compared to Babylon's, what were they at at this 37, point? 37, 38? They were already at 37, and yeah, but then again, Duncan, I am I am working on it. Yeah, true, you haven't got your uh, National College or your, or your libraries also, yet. Also, I'm not Babylon, <laughs> <laughs> who are like mega OP. Yeah. Without Babylon, without their thingy, they were on like 24 per turn, about 10 turns ago. But they didn't have four cities. No, they only had... Well, they would have had three, yeah. They so, probably would have had their cities up and running, but they certainly didn't have granaries in them and trade routes going. This is a much more reliable strategy. It's much more chilled as well yeah. and less stress. And, and it feels like, look how much vision I have and yeah. how, how safe my land feels. Yeah, you know? it does. There's Imagine no I was barbarians. Babylon and this guy had settled here. You know, I wouldn't comfortably be able to settle here maybe or here or mm. I'd be scared and maybe I'd be building bowmen and yeah. who knows what I would be doing. It's a different strategy, and I think that you have to play it differently. So I'm going to start rooting these guys together. Nice. And I'm going to start... This guy's obviously on auto. I think a lot of my workers are on auto. What's this guy doing? Look, there's a great general there. Oh, my there. God, what's he doing? I could snipe Take him. Take it out. Oh, no. Uh, in a multiplayer game, that would uh, that would be a reason for war, I think. And war, you have yeah, to, declaring war would be, yeah. You have to be a little bit careful <laughs> with that. Uh, let's... Maybe I should head up here and get this soul actually better than the iron. I mean, linking up the iron will give me plus one production, but this will give me plus one production and plus one food. So that is something to think about. Also, mm. it looks like I'm already working this tile anyway, so it's better to improve the tiles you're already working. Yeah. Uh, let's. So that's the oh, Temple of Artemis. Oh, there we go. Which is all well and good. So it's now that guy likes you. Fairly aggressive. Uh, this guy should be my friend uh, in the next turn, I guess. Oh, right, yeah. Has a really um, nice, yeah. <laughs> my my faith per turn is so so big, which is just uh, dr dreamy. Um, one turn on that library. If I see that, I automatically think, okay, in a multiplayer game, let's get something else building after it. Oh, I already have good a work. Oh, load. I see, yeah. Uh, because I I don't want to. Does it waste the production otherwise? No, it doesn't actually. But it's just because I might not notice it next turn, right. or I might have other important things to do next turn. As much as possible, I want to set up these kind Ooh, of building allies. Cues. Look at that, slam. Straight away. Allies, oh yeah. So they are giving me a gold, which is boosting my happiness up to six. Two iron as well. Whew. Oh, they're giving me iron too, are they? Right. So the general strategy for the mid-game is to go through the tech tree and get up to uh, acoustics, which I've already marked here. The reason we're sort of doing this is because this is a really good signifier for if you're not being attacked but also it's a good marker point to, for where we want to get to and it opens up our our right. options in future once we get to rationalism we can either sit back and you know capitalize on our advantage and really just carry on plowing down the science route if we're not under any threat or we can stop and say right this is a really good place to stop let's now do a frigate let's go towards yeah. frigates let's go towards artilleries let's go towards whatever attack you know, crossbows or knights. So certain wonders are very, very powerful, like Alhambra is probably one of the most powerful ones. And it's powerful because military in Civ multiplayer games is something you're just going to have to do. Yeah. You know. Um, Get over it. Jesus Christ. Oh, no! Oh, no! Right, so we've been ambushed, okay? You'll pay for this. Now, I don't see any of their units, which is surprising, but I did see you. a great, great general, didn't I? Do you yeah, remember? That was, that was south. And it's weird that to see a declaration of war without that, units You've here. got your allied city-state there with some two units. Oh, the music's all kicked off and started going <laughs> crazy. Anyway, I finished tradition. Good. So that's great. Let's you got panic. your um, You got your 
caravan there to start. Yeah. Let's panic and start going and saying, right, holy crap, we need to build units, and we're not, we haven't built any units. Now, I didn't expect this to happen because, sure, they're not top on soldiers. Zulu nation. I am bottom, though. I'm scared. Duncan, I'm scared. <laughs> His city is actually attacking my archers. Yeah. I think that's the only thing he did, though. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. oh, fine. <laughs> it's a two-pronged attack. Oh, shit. From... So this could easily happen in multiplayer, though. It really can. Um, oh, this scout. He's giving you a shot. catapult, though. You've got a catapult. So I got a catapult. Now, where do I think this is? A You're catapult take down no Brahma. is one of the worst Obama. units. Um, oh, there no Obama. Ah, oh, crap. I didn't expect this at all. So the tricky thing is that when you start getting attacked like this in multiplayer, the thing I do is I abandon all plans. I yeah. completely throw them all out the window, and I'm like, everyone, start making units. Okay? Yeah. That is literally what I say. I, I completely throw out all plans. But now, it's so hard when it's like a wonder or two turns off or a library one turn off. Yeah. It's like, I want to finish it first. Well, that's the <laughs> thing. You have to... If you're under attack and you know that they that the enemy is at your door, you just have to say, fuck it. Like, yeah. switch these out. Obviously, I'm in a point where I knew I was safe because I'd scouted around and I could knew that this would give me time. And so I'm in a bit of a quandary now. Obviously, they've declared war. I know I'm going to be at war with them. But imagine in a multiplayer game, you're at war all the time anyway. I can't see any units, so why am I worried? I can't see that they're higher than me on the demographic, so why am I worried? They wouldn't declare war unless they had units, though. Well, this is the thing. But... Equally, like it feels like, it feels like all the time in a multiplayer game you are at war anyway. So no, just but being declared declaring on, it though is like is like saying, "I'm ready for this. Let's do it." Well, like, I maybe, think I can win. maybe, right? But maybe not. Where are his units? I don't know. You know, I wouldn't get declared war. But if, on. You know, if if you were fighting, if if you're playing with me and I declared war on you, you would assume that I had something to attack with. Well, listen, that's the thing, like. Because I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't declare war if I didn't have anything to attack with. To me, though, right now, I don't feel that this situation is any different to how it was before. Uh, right? That's because you're playing AI, though. It's different. Well, no, but I think that you have to understand that the de if, if someone declares war on you in multiplayer, you're probably dead already. Nah. Right? Well, listen, the only time they're going to declare war on you is if they're... Uh, either they might just declare war on you anyway, just for the sake of it. It's, it's if they think they can win. Or... If, well, but no, but they're not here. They're not at my borders. They're not threatening. Yeah, they should be, though. In multiplayer, they would have been. They should be, but they're not. So why should I react? Yeah. I'm not going to react to something I can't see or something I don't but believe. You, you don't have that much vision. Like okay, look, my production north. is so high yeah. that I could build a composite bowman in one turn. <laughs> right? Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not wow. even building this. I'm building an archer here, and I'll, I'll pay to upgrade it once it's built. <laughs> because I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm actually under any threat. I am going to build a composite bowman here because. And you could, you can take the city of Nobam, um, um, Mobamba, with the catapult and the archers. But where are they? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Look, and suddenly I've got two composite arch bowmen <laughs> and an archer. I've got a road almost finished. I am not scared. Press F9. And now, okay, sure, they are now Max and soldiers, which yeah. is scary, but they're still not here. I assume they're coming, but when they... when They, they when have a they... great gem rule. They, they, they got an attack happening. But where is it? Also, I've got this, which shows me a great deal of information. You know, being allied with the city-state is so beneficial because look at the vision it provides. You know, if they try to attack me from anywhere down yeah. here... Plus, the, I'm going to know it's coming. shooting them the whole time as well. So, pff, I'm just not scared. I think what I'm going to do is I'm build a barracks. Now, the reason I'm building barracks is because barracks is a good all game. Yeah. And, you know, it feels like you can build barracks instead of units at the start of the game if you want to feel more safe. Yeah. Um, but I can actually build my national college now, so maybe I'll just do that instead. Well, build nutty furniture barracks, I guess. Let's get the granary up here. Again, like building, <laughs> building units in a city like that, it's not going to really help me that much no, right now. So it takes like 15 Let's just not worry about that. <laughs> let's build the Barretts and the National College. I've got two composites. I've got a composite building there in seven turns. I'll, build, I'll move that one over there. This scout is fine. I'll just anchor him there. This guy's fine. I've got, I mean, I want... Oh, hello. <laughs> I thought he was going to declare war on you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Get that whale with the boat. 
Um, oh. oh, yeah. Oh, oh I can't you have construct a time. outside my territory. So do I want to pay a shitload of gold? No, you're, you're losing gold, so you don't really want to spend it yet. Fine, I'll do it anyway. Uh, let's put this composite in there. That'll stop me losing gold. Oh, you're getting gold from the, the tile, though. I guess. And I'll put... Oh, I see. When you when you put... Because you garrison them, yeah. You don't lose gold. i that there until I can pay for the tile. Um, a golden age is Golden age. Perfect timing. Right. And he is attacking me now with a, a warrior, which is going <laughs> to do nothing. <laughs> so I'm going to move my catapult. You might... You, you could you could start marching on his city maybe. Where should I be my catapult to? I don't know if I can. Sh I don't think catapults can shoot over mountains. But honestly, like him attacking this thing, good luck. Uh, I'll yeah. move. I'll maybe move my composite bow actually over to. to behind. But it's gonna have a composite bow built anyway in there in two turns, which is gonna start peppering it for a crap load of damage. Yeah. I'm just not scared of this really. Let's put him on auto. So let's treat this like it was a multiplayer game. And F1s. I think in multiplayer it would be a bit more scary. I was going well. Because in like in single player, the like AI just like declare war. Just just if they're pissed it off, it gives you, me like, warning. That's the thing. But yeah. maybe maybe imagine this was a warning that I noticed on soldiers that suddenly this guy was number one and yeah. I was number z number bottom. You know, look, Sweden is number bottom now, so I know that they're absolutely useless. So why am I bothering to be forced to city? a deal with um with these Zulus to attack you? Probably and they just didn't. They just went along with it to like. Fable, I, I, I'm not really. Do I don't really care about AI games. I'm talking about what it would be like in a multiplayer. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is that in multiplayer, you don't get the warning of this declaration of war. Okay, but look how quickly I was able to build up a couple of levels of shut up, a couple of levels of um, units. You know, suddenly I've got a composite bowmen in every city. Not only that, but you know. These are on hills, all of them, so they're pretty tanky. You've got a spare trade route as well you need, to, you need to use. Have I? Have I got three now? That's nice. Well, that's what I'll build with this guy after here then. So, uh, another caravan. If I was um, on... If I if my city had happened on an ocean, yeah. I would have built another city on an ocean and I would have cargo shipped back. Yeah, yeah. That would have been one of the first things I did. And I would have focused hard to get that. Um, I'm getting nine gold a turn now, which is surprising. Because you're in a golden age. Ah, okay, yeah, that would be it. Um, so that will let me buy that tile of whales in it fairly soon. Um, water mill? Sure. So I'm still at war, but <laughs> just like whatever. You don't care, it's just building like water mills. And <laughs> um, right, okay, sure, let's just keep building stuff, I guess. Uh, Five turns for an oracle is not bad. I could probably do with a Colosseum. Because I might get unhappy soon, but I don't know. Maybe, I mean, five to, you, that's really tempting for you, isn't it, to see that? Well, you get you get great science points for that as well, which is always nice. Yeah. I think, I don't, I, I don't think much of the Oracle. I think it's okay. Well, the, I think the great science points are one of the main reasons why you get it. At this point in the game, though, I feel like I just want to wait till I can get to Renaissance. Yeah. I've obviously changed my build slightly structure to go to crossbows. And... I've got there re relatively quickly. I think that's the National College finished as well. Okay, so... Yeah. That's why your science is now 51, which is pretty good. So, I mean, it's, it's coming up to turn 77, though, so I'm, I'm getting fairly deep into the game. I'm feeling fairly cosy. I've got another crossbow built here now, which is going to start getting to be too many now. I but find that if by turn 100, you've got, like, roughly, like, 85 science is pretty good. Okay. So there's a great profit. Let's enhance our religion. Let's fortify that guy. Let's build. I mean, this is the Petra city, you know, but look how long it's going to take to build. I mean, this wasn't the first city I plonked down. Oh, was it the first city I plonked down? It was, yeah, but you didn't grow at all. I decided not to grow it. Uh, I mean, that was my choice. I mean, if you could grow it a bit and then build Petra if no one else does. No one seems to be I still feel like this stuff. is a better situation to be in. Yeah. Um. I. I mean, I like getting... A shitload of gold and production and stuff off this, and I think that if I keep building buildings, like eight eight turns of water mill, sure. So if if you can grow it like another two, then you you can use like a lot more production. I I, I really don't feel like I'm gonna get that much more out of like it. That like sheep, you that can I improve need. that sheep. That sheep over there. Yeah, oh, that's a bit of a risk. <laughs> it's a bit less alright. That's great wall right next to it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. It's a bit far away. So enhancing the religion, we've yeah. sort of been through this already. You know, follow the belief. There's some new ones, there, isn't there? The followers are the same. 
religious community is great. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so we're going to get that because it's really good. Production for each follower. And you get, a, you get, well, you get enhanced. And the enhanced beliefs, a lot of these are okay. Uh, so defender of the faith, combat strength near friendly cities that follow this religion. Now, if someone else is ha- has got your religion and you're attacking them, they right. don't get this. Right? Yeah. So if they're defending against you and they're using your religion, they uh, don't okay. get that. But if you're defending against them, you do get it. Um most missionaries and inquisitors not so not so great but because you don't really use them i don't anyway these this one here is a spreader one and the other spreader one is this one they're both about equivalent to each other usually um like i think what this one does is it changes the spread from like 10 tiles to 30 13 tiles right. so if i know that like um I wanted to spread somewhere that's 13 tiles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then, and I want it to get a little bit extra f- extra further, then that's a good thing to have. And it will increase the way your religion spreads out across the world. Um, I don't know. It's up to you. Depends. I mean, I've also got tithe, so I want as many people as possible yeah. to get it. If I, for example, had, if I hadn't taken tithe, okay, and I'd taken, actually, I'd taken something else. And if I took, if I take religious community, so I've got these two follower um, ones. Anyone who has my religion gets pagodas and yeah, religious community, good. which is really good for them. So maybe I don't want them to have my religion. You know, maybe I don't want to spread it. Yeah. Um, that means I just don't want to put any effort into spreading it. So what's left, you know, well, not super loads. Um, more common profits coming in. That might be okay. What about the last one? Uh... 50 faith every time a great person it's terrible actually well I don't know if it's terrible I just don't think it's very good like if you're buying them with faith at the end then you're going to be able to buy a few more mm. yeah that's true but I just don't think it's I don't think it's much good I'm already getting like 15 per turn how many great people am I really expending spreading to city states might be worth it because look, um, if I look if I expend like 10 great people across the whole game yeah that's like 500 which is not very much what, or if, what about spreading to city states because then it doesn't matter if you get the uh, religious community and the pagodas really. this is really bad yeah, no? yeah. bad it's, okay. It just doesn't really do much. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, the Enhancer is a bit of a weird one, but I actually like this one, you know, because I think 20% combat strength near yeah. your own cities. It's quite, you can't be wrong, can you? Which pff, is not terrible. It means you can defend better. Um, I don't know. People will have their own attitudes towards this, I think, and, you know, you can read them on Reddit. Um, but again, it's fairly situational. There's a lot of really bad ones, as always. Something so my... one. <laughs> Something oh, one. No. What? What's wrong? So I went for uh, Delhi Katessen. Delhi Katessen. 